Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio with um, a video on tools, which is the prompt for this week. And I am doing this video on the types of pens and things that I like to use strictly from a doodler's point of view. This has nothing to do with mixed media. This is only about doodling. The reason I'm doing this is because I've learned a lot over the last couple months playing around with different kinds of pens and pencils that I find that I like that will work for one thing but not for the other. So that's why I've decided to do this. So what I'm going to review is a brand new pen to me. They're called Artline. There are eight pens and actually they're like micron pens. They have a nib on them. They are water resistant and it states that clearly, clearly, clearly sorry, it says pigment ink, water based, water resistant, acid free. It says that right on the pen. You get eight pens with a million different sizes for $20 on Amazon. And if I could remember who recommended these pens, I would give credit to them, but I like these pens. Now, there is a downsize to these pens. Um, and I will tell you that in a second. The next one is Micron Pens. Everybody knows about Micron Pens. They come in lots of different sizes and packs. You can take a coupon, go to Michael's, get 40% off. I suggest that's the way you do it. While ordering from Amazon where I live out in the sticks is great. It's convenient. It's not always the wisest choice money-wise for me. So then there's Microns. The next one that I, I like to use a lot is the Sig Signo Pen, the Uniball White Signo. I like using black and white and white in all kinds of different doodle projects. There's that one. And then, of course, it's the jelly roll pen, the white jelly roll pens. So that's it for pens. So let me tell you what I like and don't like about the pens. All right, so let's see. Art line. Let me pull out the rest of the sizes that I bought when I, I got when I got the set. I think that's every one of them. Let me do it from small to large. Okay, so they come in different sizes. You get two, four, six, eight, and I think they were like $19.99 and Amazon Prime, you get the free shipping. All right, this is 0 .0, 0 0.05, which is the smallest one for line work. It is exactly like, let me put you in closer. It is exactly like its counterpart. Um... Let me see if I have it in my basket. Watch me not have it here since I'm doing it. Wait, wait, wait. It is the killer part to the Micron 005. Here's the Micron. Same exact thing. They're both very thin lines. And then you get a, a one. And I ran the ink out of the two. It went in the trash. So you get um, the o, .05. You get the... 005. Then you get the one and the two, which I've already used up and thrown out. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you get two, four, six, eight. You get nine pins for $20. And what I like about these is that the micron pins in the packets don't come in some of these sizes like you don't get a seven you don't get a six um uh, what other size do you not get with them i think that's two sizes that you don't get in the micron pens micron pens uh you get less pens for about the same price maybe a couple dollars less but if you go to michael's you can use your coupon to, to get like 40 or 50 percent off of the microns. Now there is a, a thing that I don't like about the art lines, but if you're not picky, this won't bother you like it bothers me. If you look at the pens, basically they look like they're about the same size, right? See the difference on the end here? Let me put you in closer. See the ends? See this? It's deeper than this. This is not going to happen on this pen. It barely stays on there. So if you have a person who likes to keep track of your uh, cap 
it's not going to happen with these pens. You're going to have to put it someplace safe while you write because while you're moving around, I mean, you can barely look at it and it pops right off. Microns. This is more built for this. It doesn't come off. It's not easily moved like the other pen is. Something else that um, may be concerning to some people is the fact that the... I put you back out because it's hard to see the whole pen. There you go. Um, it's hard to see it. This, the airline, is a wee bit shorter as a pen, excluding the ends and the nibs. It's a shorter pen than Micron, and I'm not sure if that means you get less ink, or they packed, or it's the barrel. The barrel is fatter on the art line than it is on the um, Micron pens, so I'm not sure if that means you get less ink or not, but I have little hands, and these are little short pens. See, a Micron, it's up a little higher. I hold the art line, it's down, you know, it's shorter. So that, that are t those are two things that I don't like, and I specifically don't like that the end is too short for the cap to stay on because inevitably what I'm going to do is I'm going to misplace the cap and I'm going to lose a pen because I can't find the cap and the tip's going to dry out. So if you're going to do these Artline pens, I suggest that when you throw a pen away, you take the cap off and save it and put it in a safe place in case you ever lose the cap off of an active pen so that you can put the cap back on the pen later because it has no it has the size on it but you know you'll just have to look at this to make sure you have the right size on here you can wipe this out or do whatever you want on here on the you know it has the number on the lid and if the lid doesn't match the pen all you need to do is just make sure you look at the pen for the size ignore the ignore the lid if you've put a spare cap on it. All right, and that's probably could be true for Microns, except for Micron caps don't tend to wander off as much as the art line, but I really like the art line. All right, I'm gonna stick my finger in some dirty paint water. See, nothing, they don't move. All right, so those are those two kinds of pens. And I'm really crazy about the art line. They, uh, and the art line nibs seem to take a little more beading than what a micron pen nib does. I don't like the micron nibs. They tend to, um, what does Shannon Green call it, narf? No, they tend to narf up more easily. All right, so the next one I'm going to do is the Uniball Signo white pen. I really like white for black work. And then there's the Jelly Roll pen, and I'll, I'll show you the limitations of these. So let me back you out. I'm going to show you part of one of my doodle journals so you understand what it is I'm talking about. I was lucky to be gifted a black Dilusions, I don't know, what do you call it? Traveler's book. Um, and I've been trying to do black work in it, black and white work. Let's see, uh, where was I going to, this page. So I like doing black and white a lot. When I doodle, I really do prefer black and white, either white on black. Um, but there's a downsize to this. I have not found a kind of white pen that will give great coverage that is opaque, means you can't see through it. All right, let me put you in so you can understand. This is going to get intensely close. All right, so let it focus. There, you see all those little scuff marks here? You see how there's little black peeking out? The jelly, the jelly Roll does it, and the Signo is really, really bad for that. I don't like that. If you're going to do a close-up of your work and people are scrutinizing your work, you don't want to see this, these little black lines everywhere where you can see it. And it doesn't work even if it dries and you go back over it again. All it does is just create new ones or scratches up what you've already laid down on the first layer. That is something I don't like about these two pens. Now, someone suggested to me that I use um, Posca pens. Poscas are okay, but they are not as good a white coverage.
See that? They're not as good white coverage. And look, it made black on the end of my pen. On the black paper. This is the Signo, which is, I'm going to put you down lighter, uh, put you down further and you can see it. And then this is the Jelly Roll. So I know the limitations of each one of these. All right, let me put you back in again. All right, so. Come on, focus. There we go. This fat one is the Posca. It does not do uh, opaque coverage. It's a little, it's like in between translucent and opaque. And when you fill in color work, you want your stuff to really be colored in. This is the Signo. If you can see it, it's got a little stripe of black right there. It does it every single time. This is Jelly Roll. Jelly Roll is really good for fine work if you're not going to have stuff really close together like uh, this kind of stuff. This is from the Jelly Roll. It does great fine line work as, not, as long as you're not covering in large spaces. This is perfect. This is a large space. I would not use a Jelly Roll on this because this would kill a Jelly Roll pin in one afternoon. I did use the Signo on it because it tended to give better coverage. This is not white enough. All right, so that's that. And they're also water, water resistant, um, except Posca is not. Posca is, is not water resistant. I like when I do doodle work and I put this much time into something, I don't want I I will have a canary if my stuff smears or if my stuff bleeds. I'm not crazy about that. The nice thing about doing it on this heavy paper from the dilutions is it has not bled through. See, this is this is fine line work. This is all with a jelly roll pen. It looks great. But I don't always do fine line work, so I know the limitations of my pens. If I need a little bit of coloring in, and I don't mind a few black lines now and then, the Signo Uniball pen will be great. If I want fine line work where there's lots of gaps in between it and I'm not filling anything as a solid color or a solid surface, then I like the Jelly Roll. This, I don't usually use a lot in my doodling because it just it smears puddles if you mash down on the nib too much you get a puddle of paint you're in the middle of something like this and you get a puddle of white it's going to be a little hard to fix that and it's also going to be hard to wipe it off the black that's why i don't like to use poscas for that all right i was recently gifted these great markers from someone and i'd never seen these before and i have not been able to find them these are called only put the lid back on. Detailed doodlers. There's 12 pieces. It says fine tip felt markers. It's in French and in Spanish on the front. I love the case. Okay, so my card <laughs> was full and I had to stop and delete some stuff and put my card back into the recorder. All right, so the next thing I, I was talking about, and the thing I was talking about are these um, detailed doodlers. These things are great, but there is a downfall to them. There is a downside, and I will show you here. They have really good nibs on them that, that seem very strong. They're kind of a triangle shape. The lids snap on them. The, the back is perfect. They stay on the back. You're not going to lose the lid. They're long and lean, and they're triangle shaped. They fit in your hand nicely. You got a nice flat surface for your finger here, and a nice flat surface here for your thumb. They rest in your hand beautifully. But if you're, do whoop, you're doing some kind of doodling, sometimes they bleed out. Not a lot, but it's enough that it is irritating. So that's the downside to these is I don't think they're waterproof, but they're great. There's a nice selection of colors. And if you're not a person who seals their work, then these are these would be perfect for you. Good luck finding them. I don't know where they came from. I've looked a couple places, have not found them. If you find them, please leave me a comment about where you found them because I would like to get more of these. I love these things. They're compact, they're easy to drag around, and I I really like these. These are great for color. I don't do a lot of color, but I like these for a little spot of color in something. 
Okay, so there's those. All right, so the next one I'm going to do is, uh, other people have told me about these, and if you have a Dollar Tree close to you, you will see these. They're called uh, R2 Blast. There's the teal. Nice tip. It's a pen. It's not a nib. It's a ball pen. There's the orange. The black. These, these are so great. I love these. I'm looking for red and green eventually. All right, so these are a dollar, and you can find them at Dollar Tree. They're very cheap. They're very easy to use. They're very durable. Now, see what is happening here. This is no, oh yeah, they do smear. They're not water resistant, although you can't tell here. I'll show you something later, and you can see it. So these are great pens to use if you're a doodler who likes pens and doesn't want to invest in microns or the art lines. These you can purchase at the Dollar Tree store. These are great. All right, so let me show you examples of what I'm talking about. Now, I'm not going to do a flip through of this, but I'm just going to show you what I did. Before, when I start out on new paper and before I start getting really into the doodling, let me put you in so you can see better. I test my pens out and I label what I did with them. These are Micron. This is a Micron pen right here. And it works really well on this Dilutions paper. Um, this is the R2 right here. This is, mine shows it as dark blue, but in the camera it looks teal. This is the teal pen and that really looks teal. The bad thing is, is that when you put any kind of sealant on them and it's hard, you can't see it on the camera, maybe a little bit, it smears. It's hard to see on the camera, but what happened is when I put the sealant on it, it smeared, so I had this nice light blue stuff going off there to the side. I don't like that, and I like to seal my pages because if I do anything like shading with a pencil, I don't want that to rub off on the other, the opposite page. So that's why I seal all my pages where I do this kind of stuff. I don't like it to run and I don't want it to smear or transfer. This one, it did the same thing when I put the, the, um, when I put the gel medium on it. Some of my stuff started running. If you do more than one pass with the gel medium, then it does tend to smear your work. And I'm not crazy about my stuff being smeared. I spend a lot of time doing this, and I don't want it ruined by trying to seal it to preserve it. Um, if you don't think your work will ever get wet, then you don't need to seal it, or you don't think there'll be anything that'll smear from one side of the page to the other, then you don't need to seal it. I like sealing my work. Um, but I did, like, this stuff in the back, this will never seal because you don't really do shade. I don't really do shading on these things, so it does not need to be sealed. So this stuff will never be sealed. Even though it was a lot of work, this stuff will never get sealed. Oh, well, there's that stuff right there. All right, so that's it for my video. Um, I do want to say something real quick before I sign off about paper about paper. Be sure you understand when you do doodling that your paper is only capable of doing so much. Like this paper, let me show, I don't know if I have an example of it in here because I tried to cover it up as much as I could. Um, okay, so I already covered it up. You won't be able to see it. But sometimes when you go over something more than once, like something that's black and it's just regular cardstock, what will tend to happen is it will make goobers on your paper because your paper can't take the back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And also it will bleed through to the other side. So what I did in these is I did the doodle on one side and then on the back side of the paper I did collage over it so that you wouldn't be able to see where it bled through because I wanted to keep it nice and neat because I want to do a flip through. So there you go. Be sure you understand that the, what you do and do not like about things. And when you select your pens for doing your doodling, make sure that you understand what your stuff will and will not do. There's certain things that certain pens will not do, or they do too much of something and you don't want it. Um, 
I have started to whittle down my pens. And if I don't like a pen, I tend to get rid of it now because I don't want to spend a lot of money on pens that I don't like. I just happened to get lucky on these art lines that I really like these. If you're using a textured paper, you need to be careful about using the microns because they do not take bumpy abuse very well. Where's the nib out quickly? Don't press down too hard or you'll destroy the nib and have ink, ink filled in here and no nib to use it with. So whenever you doodle, just keep a mental note about what your supplies can and cannot do. The tools that you use in your art are really important because we tend to spend a lot of money on things and we tend to be a collector of more pens than what we actually can use. Remember, you can only write with one pen at a time. So, you don't need 50,000. Find a brand you like, use it, and when it's gone, replace it. You don't need to have 50,000 micron pens. You need just enough to get the job done. Okay, that's it for me. Again, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. On behalf of My Creative Year, hashtag My Creative Year, the prompt was tools. Thanks, everybody. Bye.